everybody, and welcome back to another episode of First and Last. My name is Josh, and with me this week we've got Joe. Hey, man. And Jimmy. What's up, dogs? It kind of sounded like Cats. Joe said, Amen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got Joe. Amen. I've I found Jesus. Can I where where was he? Um oh he was just a uh, you know in my backyard, just chilling, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> just waiting for Joe. <laughs> waiting for me. I knew one day you'd come out, Joe. I saw two pairs of footsteps. Um and something. He carried me part of the way or something. One I, <laughs> like in the snow. I don't know. I couldn't hear him. One he was, was like you. yelling from my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Joe said he found him, but he didn't say he went and talked to him. Yeah. You know. <laughs> just closed all the blinds. Could have been a hallucination. Yeah, could have been. Sure. So, how's everybody doing? Everyone got got their GameStop stock and stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> I wish. Could have let us know about that. Would have been. Nice. I mean, if you were redditing properly, Jimmy, yeah. I guess you would have known. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, who knows how like this GameStop, um, stock bet thing like turns over between here and Wednesday, but like. At this point on what Thursday, I, like I'm just a little bit annoyed about how this GameStop thing just took over all of Twitter. Like oh. there's just <laughs> nothing else going on on Twitter today except for GameStop. Like even like people in like wrestling Twitter are make, making GameStop jokes, and I'm just like, is there anything else going on? <laughs> <laughs> where did where did Joe. Bernie's mittens go? Yeah, <laughs> give me more Bernie's mittens memes. <laughs> It's just gonna be a Bernie sitting outside of a GameStop, Joe. <laughs> That's all you're gonna get. Yep. Yeah. I mean, pretty fun uh, and pretty insane, though the whole thing. Especially now that I had like one of the what is it, Robinhood, like one of those uh, trading apps that you can do. Yeah, like, they shut s- it down. So you, which, you know. I mean, let's be honest, if it was the other way around losing $70 billion, they probably wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. They would have been uh, like, no, this is free and fair now. Yeah. Pretty sure there's a lot of legal going on. <laughs> we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm curious. I'm rooting for GameStop. I hope they just get to keep it all. <laughs> yeah. Good on GameStop. Maybe GameStop, the store itself, comes out as a winner. And they just like <laughs> open up a bunch of new stores. <laughs> open up <laughs> just brick and mortars. More yeah. more brick and mortars during during the pandemic. <laughs> that's what You're that's lying. what we need. More game stops in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just some they just tank themselves again after giving this golden opportunity. <laughs> no, they uh I think on their board of directors now, like as of a couple months ago, they have like the dudes from like chewy that like online pet store kind yeah. of thing we buy some chewy yeah and mm. so you know they're looking uh game stuff's looking good buy GameStop stock everyone <laughs> if you, you heard can. it here first <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here you know last you know i think it started off the day at like 500 and it ended yeah. at like 250 so it's it's coming down a little bit i but, feel like we like legally have to say that we're not giving financial advice <laughs> oh no this is all this is jokes this is jokes <laughs> purely mm. entertainment but seriously get on that you'll be sorry <laughs> trust us uh, oh, man who knew it was this easy to manipulate the stock market besides everybody on wall street for the last 45 years hmm <laughs> now we know uh well what's this show about (laughs) instead of being your premier financial uh uh, advice podcast i like how i like i complained about this gamestop thing being everywhere and then we just start off this show with talking about (laughs) yeah you dove into it after that you know you were like oh it's everywhere let's talk about this (laughs) uh but it's a tv pod we take a tv show uh usually show we haven't seen or at least haven't seen all the way through um, and watch the first episode, get a little taste of it, and then skip straight to the end and watch the finale, and then judge it based on just that. So Correct. harshly. It's the when short said, stock of TV. Hey. 
probably not true. <laughs> is, I, I can't imagine that analogy works out. <laughs> yeah. From the the number of threads that I've read on Twitter today, that's what I know. <laughs> so you haven't learned much. <laughs> I'll short you. <laughs> uh, what? Joe, it's your show, right? <laughs> <laughs> you picked the show today? I did. Um, this actually, I think it's a viewer suggestion. Um, because thank it, you, listener. Yeah, thank you, mystery listener. If Jimmy knows exactly who this was, then we can give the credit. But, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Today I've picked the man in the high castle. Ooh, Nazis! So, Nazi you said time. In your description, like we haven't seen this, but sometimes, or like, or like we haven't seen all of it. Have you seen some of this, Joe? Um, I've seen, there's four seasons, uh, and I watched the oh, full wow. first season. Okay. I thought maybe that but, was foreshadowing. Yeah, no, no. I've definitely seen some of this show, uh, but like, maybe I've seen an episode or two. Maybe it was the first episode. I literally, I don't have any idea. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Um, so yeah. I'm going to, everything that I'm going to see today, I'm sure if I've seen it, my mind won't remember. So yeah. Jimmy, what have at. you seen? Uh, zero, zero percent castles. Okay. Are you aware of it? I've heard of it. I mean, I think it's a, it's a Hulu show, isn't it? Cause I feel like, uh, it's Amazon. Oh, it is. Okay. One of those. Yeah. Um, and this was, uh, it premiered in 2015, um, and it was kind of when they were just starting to get into um, original shows and entertainment. Like, I think they had some movies in the works, but, like, this was kind of the, one of their big first spends. Um, which, and, like, by by the description of the show, like, it makes sense because it's very high concept. The concept is uh, what if what if the U.S. lost World War II? Mm. <laughs> Uh, what if the Allied powers won World War II? Um, and, like, that's an easy way to just, like, sell a show. Like, that's, yeah, sure, let's give whoever these guys are millions and millions of dollars to make this show because you can describe it in one sentence. Also, yeah, we're Amazon and we <laughs> also we're Amazon and we print money, so who cares? <laughs> Not Jeff Bezos, that's for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so, and then it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's, it takes place in America, right? The United, the, the not so maybe United States anymore of America. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know it's at least German occupied to some extent. Is it Japanese occupied? Italian? Is there Mecca Mussolini's in this show? I don't know. I feel like I feel like I don't want to say. Okay. I don't either. <laughs> I think just, uh, you know, just that it didn't turn out well for the Americans. That's right. Right. It's about it. I mean, I guess I would assume from what I think the show is, is that it's like in America, it's probably, and I think that it is occupied by the access powers now. Mm-hmm. And I, what is it? I don't even know what year does he think this do I think this takes place in like the the 50s 60s 70s I'm, f- I'm feeling like, 50s personally like right after mm-hmm. pretty quick seems right. like good I, it seems like you don't want cell phones in this that's what I'm basically getting at mm. yeah I think it's definitely before cell phones and I'm you know I'm assuming that it it sets up the 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 the, the the atmosphere and you know how things are going probably a uh, a twist you know the beginning starts off and it seems like normal everyday america pre pre pandemic <laughs> and uh, pre pandemic pre cell phones and that's what it feels like and then maybe like a couple minutes in it's kind of like after the person gets done ordering their ice cream cone they turn around and there's just a huge like swastika on the wall and everyone's chill mm, yeah they just even though like at, even though uh, you know, everyone knows Nazis going in. That's like the one thing I would think everyone would know about this show going in is like Nazis. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then I'm sure we'll meet a, some sort of resistance factor 
at some point in this episode because I feel like that's probably the driving, so. uh, like thing in this show. Is, yeah, uh, fighting it just back. It, it can't be all Nazis, right? <laughs> you gotta have like someone to cheer for. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's just a show of like how the Nazis live in America, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. They're having a great time, and it's just yeah, and it's just bureaucratic bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like uh we're gonna town you know the new dusseldorf wants a levy built can we <laughs> yeah. vote get the town console to get together see if they want that heil hitler blah 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 <laughs> et cetera. Et cetera. Oof. hitler at this point is some sort of uh in in this show even i bet he's some sort of like l ron hubbard figure right like some sort of like almost maybe religious head oh for sure uh, of like a movement yeah because i i mean shit was already getting weird with the nazis and then to think that they would have won yeah you'd mm-hmm. think that hitler would be some sort of demigod holy shit joe blimps i'm gonna see a blimp in this oh, show aren't I? snap oh so man <laughs> so but am i gonna uh, but am i gonna see one in the finale yeah oh, maybe no. maybe not god i hope so <laughs> <laughs> i just thought about that way to go joe good choice wow hopefully the dream is alive it's alive <laughs> thank you nazis uh, thank <laughs> i think you, i maybe just nazis. think like josh thinks the you. writer i don't i'm not <laughs> thinking no <laughs> No, thank you, bl- thank you, you Nazi do- blimp makers. <laughs> to to steal a joke, you do not have to give it to the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that. I would prefer I would prefer not to. <laughs> um, my other question, I guess, is, you know, there's there's always like fiction, kind of, and, and like real life. S- stuff about how the nazis did a lot of like weird experimentation and how we wouldn't have like some technologies and whatnot if it wasn't for their crazy ass fucking scientists and Mm -hmm. stuff so i'm wondering if maybe we get some like weird stuff like almost science fictiony things happening at Mm -hmm. some point in this tv show yeah um we should note that the show is based on a novel by Philip K. Dick, who is okay, one of the most renowned sci-fi writers. So, hell yeah, okay, <laughs> all right, yeah. So, definitely opportunity for some sci-fi elements in here, and not just alternate reality. Nice. All right, I, okay. I've asked all I've asked all my pondering questions. What are yours, Jimmy? Uh, mine, I think, so I, I feel like I'm confusing this. Uh, it's good to know that this is based on a book. I feel like, was there a, like a James Franco movie about this, like exact same premise at this, around this time or maybe the other 127 Franco? hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, no, but that was, oof. Hang on. Yeah, I'm, so I, I'm Googling James Franco Nazi and I'll let you know what comes up. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> James Franco, a Nazi. Um, I guess uh, I'm trying to decide if this is like the 50s. Does that mean it's going to be like sunny California Nazi? Is it going to be like Midwest Nazi? Or are we just going to go straight to Fargo New York? Nazi? Is that what you're going with? Fargo Nazi. I- I'm trying to picture the 50s like TV, <laughs> which would be very like feel very midwest and like pleasantville or like are they going to be like they got to be chasing after the jews so like is a borough going to be a concentration camp it's gonna be like the bronx is a concentration camp something some city or something is going to be a concentration camp could be minneapolis no they wouldn't do that to us <laughs> Um. Yeah. Just for the record, the James Franco show you're thinking of is eleven twenty two sixty three. Um, and that's oh, is it, it's not an alternate reality. Yeah, it's not an alternate reality. Oh. It's a guy goes back in time to uh, prevent the Kennedy assassination. That that's a show. That's a show on yeah. Hulu starring James Franco. Is it over? <laughs> um. I it might have so. been I'm, a mini series. Pretty, it's only eight I think it was episodes. A mini seri- yeah, I think yeah. it's a mini series, and I'm pretty sure I, I watched all of it. <laughs> well, fine. 
Never mind. It was a... Uh, I think it's based on a Stephen King book. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Books it's good. Make you should the, watch it. Make of the shows. Yeah, it's a book. Books so make, make of the show. shows. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right well should we just get into this first episode <laughs> probably sure all right so we'll f- find out if it's in the 1950s and if it's not all of jimmy's uh thoughts are <laughs> going to be ruined here it's oh. going to be in like 2099 um oh, it, first episode of the man in the high castle it premiered on january 15th 2015 and it's called the new world we'll uh we'll we'll be back after that And we're back. We're done with the first episode of The Man in the High Castle called The New World. Jimmy, do you have a write-up? Sure do. In 1962, Nancy occupied New York. In, in yeah. In 1962, na- that, doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Uh, Joe Blake volunteers to serve the resistance by driving a truck to the neutral zone in the Rockies. In Japan, occupied San Francisco... Juliana Crane, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, receives a package from her sister Trudy, only later to see her shot by the Japanese police. Juliana discovers the package contains impossible footage of the Allies winning World War II. Her boyfriend Frank urges her to go to the police to plead her innocence. However, Juliana lies to him and instead heads to the neutral zone to deliver the film in Trudy's place. A woman attempts to steal the film, but escapes only with decoys. Japanese trade minister Nabusaki Tagami? Yeah, Tagomi, I think. Tagomi? Mm -hmm. uh, Meets the Nazi ambassador Hugo Rice to finalize the details of a visit to San Francisco by the Japanese crown prince. Later, Tagomi meets Rudolf Wagoner, maybe uh, a high-ranking Nazi official pretending to be a Swedish businessman. Are you talking about Rudolf Wagner? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was his name. I don't know. Something like that. Joe and Juliana meet and become friends in Cannon City in the neutral zone. In San Francisco, the Japanese police begin searching for Juliana because of her connection to Trudy. Blake calls SS oh my Obergruppenführer <laughs> Smith <laughs> revealing <laughs> that Blake is secretly working for the Nazis much to our chagrin <laughs> not oh, Joe Blake <laughs> Joe Blake well I mean he has two first names he can't be trusted yeah. and boom there it is <laughs> um, that's right um, so number one the Japanese ambassador guy, yeah. that's Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat, the oh, movie. Yeah. I just want to point that out <laughs> immediately. Yeah. He might start stealing souls in this show. Could, Could you be? imagine? It's possible. That'd be a uh, yeah. Man in the High Castle Mortal Kombat crossover. <laughs> Changing my predictions to something else. Um, um, yeah, so is there anything else you want to say about this this plot? I, my curiousness is my first thing I was thinking is like, what are these videotapes or the, the, the film yeah. reels? Mm-hmm. Um, really know. Obviously they're re- like our realities, real life stuff. You yeah. Know? That's the, that's really the most supernatural slash science fiction element. I guess not really science fiction, but just weird supernatural thing going on at this point is, uh, Aside from the, you know, the Axis winning World War II, there's also these reels <laughs> of film um, that Juliana has in her, pers- in her possession that she got from her uh, now deceased sister that show what looks like our universe because it, like, the Allies win. Right. Um, and they're showing, like, the Japanese surrender, um, things like that. Um so yeah, I don't know. Do you guys have theories on what that is? Is that actually another universe, or is it all just yeah, fake I, stuff? 
Hmm. Her boyfriend, Frank, was like, oh, yeah, they just make fake movies to make mm-hmm. it look like we won. Like, his thoughts on the situation were, yeah, that's just a movie. Like, it's just fake. You know, mm-hmm. like the moon landing. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, he, and he says that they're made by someone called the man in the high castle. Yeah. He said, oh, yeah, the man. That's, oh, you, why do you have one of those Clearly. man in the high castle films? He said specifically he's a man who makes anti-fascist movies. That's mm-hmm. basically how he described him. I was like, oh, he's so he. This is a. It's like he's like the Wizard of Oz, kind of. <laughs> the Man in the High what? Castle, something yeah. like that. Hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I assume that we yeah. find out that that's uh, played by James Franco. <laughs> he is the <laughs> I'm still confused Man in the High he's Castle. The high castle. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea that it's a a parallel, like somehow, like a video of from a parallel dim- dimension or world or something like that. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's how we get a little sci-fi. I mean, I guess I don't even, I don't think we have to get sci-fi E mm-hmm. really. I mean, I think the alternate history is probably enough, but uh, if I, if I had a bet, cause I don't have it as my prediction. So if we're going to do footage bets, I'm going to say alternate dimension. Mm-hmm. I will say that from what I remember, because uh, I've watched the first season, and from what okay. I remember of what I saw, it's still not clear what those films are, and there are more of them discovered and shown, um, and they show things that are obviously not occurring in their universe. Uh huh. Um. But yeah, it's it's still not really clear. So I Excellent. guess if we find out in the finale, I'll find out along with you guys. <laughs> I got predicts, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Anything else? So, so the movies are called Grasshopper Lies Heavy. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what that's <laughs> referring to. Yeah, big old grasshopper. Big old grasshoppers. grasshoppers, and we see Joe underneath his truck, um, discovering that he's. So he he just knows that his job. This this guy Don. Warren gave him this he convinced him to give him this job for the like the resistance Mm -hmm. and and Joe's Um, starting out in New York Juliana Juliana was in San Francisco which is under like Japanese control um, and she made her way to like the neutral zone with these films Um, and then yeah we start out with Joe in New York meeting up with this resistance leader yeah and he's and he's a so he's going to drive this truck that he he, full of something. Um, and he's trying to figure out later in the episode, he's trying to figure out what is in there because he stopped at some sort of checkpoint and, uh, there he can tell that they're going to, you know, search his search his stuff. And then he finds underneath the truck, this video with the same grasshopper lies heavy, Mm -hmm. um, on it. Uh, really, really quick. I googled "The Grasshopper Lies Heavy" and it is a book published independently in 2015. So, like, right around the time that this came out. Oh. I don't know if maybe this isn't heavy thing to do, but it's kind of weird because it seems like it takes place in 1966, the century after the Confederate States of America won the Civil War, the Cold War rages, and the Soviets control the West Coast. The British have the colonies. And the Confederate in the Confederacy powder keg is in the middle, so mm. it is a different alternative universe mm. Uh, mm. thing. Fantastic. So, but you don't know if it's related to like this. Yeah, I book? don't know. Well, because like it seemed like that came out in July of 2015, mm-hmm. and this show came out in January. Is it the same <laughs> so, author? It says it's Chandler Duke. Mm. Is the person who came up with it? I think that's right. All right, Chenandler Duke. <laughs> um, did you recognize Josh um, Juliana Crane? No, no, I did not. That's Alexa Davalos, who's in Chronicles of Riddick. Ah, uh, you call yourself a Vin Diesel fan? Yeah, uh, I, yeah, <laughs> uh, you you saw through. You 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 found me out, Jimmy. I'm not as die hard. Uh, I think it was last week or the week before. Listeners will, I'm sure, tell us that you said that about uh, the the sergeant from 
Fast I know and Furious. I, d- I know I declared. Every me. week I'm going to try to find a, a, like a degree of someone who was in a Vin Diesel film and ask you about it. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll uh, catch up on my Vin Diesel lore and I'll, <laughs> and I'll catch you in your trying to catch me. So Hitler's see. alive. <laughs> He's on his way out. Apparently. They're they're making him sound like the good guy in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz like he's sick. He's one guy fr- who I'm pretty sure was in um a teen movie in the early 2000s was saying that uh he's claiming that Hitler has Parkinson's. Mhm. Um did you guys recognize that guy? Uh, road trip, right? Yeah, DJ you know, Qualls. The kid from Road Trip. Yeah. You're talking mm-hmm. about the guy that like came into the bar when it was. Yeah. Ju- oh, he's in a Supernatural. His name is he plays oh, he a is. hunter in Supernatural. Mm-hmm. So DJ that's Qualls. Where I, that's where I get him from. from. Road Trip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Oh, he, he's got, <laughs> he, he's saying that Hitler has Parkinson's and he's gonna die. And the the uh, next up next up to bat, everyone everyone's more afraid of this guy. Which yeah. is and pretty sad if you're being compared <laughs> to Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. And the Japanese ambassador, when he was meeting with that German guy, like secretly, they were like, yeah, he's got like, Hitler's got like six months to live. And it's pretty much decided that like Germany is going to like take over or do something bad to the Japanese part of the United States. Mm-hmm. It essentially, it like, means that once Hitler dies, it's going to be war. Um, yeah. pretty much guaranteed war because the like the next people in line for power uh, on the German side are um, just hungry for they, they didn't think it was a good plan to divide up the United States in two and make a deal with the Japanese so they kind of want to just wipe out the Japanese and take over the whole United States it does seem I mean ne- nothing's good about any of this for obviously any of the uh, uh, like United States people f- before from the before times but (laughs) it does seem like living in like the pacific japanese area seems a little better Mm -hmm. like you uh a little bit better integrated than the like you should be scared when you're anywhere in the like nazi controlled section of america yeah there's a couple things just like anecdotally in this first episode that like hint at that where on the like on the Pacific side in the Japanese, like um, there's some sort of like with the younger generation, more acceptance of the um, Japanese culture. And they mention stuff about the Japanese being interested in American culture. Um, but there is still like a secret police that the Japanese have, right. That they're looking for resistance mm-hmm. fighters and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas on the American side, like when Joe gets Nazi side, on the, yeah, on the, on the Nazi <laughs> side, uh, there's a part where um, I can't—I forget why why the cop is helping out Joe. It, he gets a flat tire or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then it's like raining ash, and Joe's just like, Ooh. "Oh, what's this all about?" And like the cop mentions, like, "Oh, they, like we're close to the hospital, and on Wednesdays they just like burn up all like the like men- like mentally ill and like terminally ill because they're just like a drag on the state." <laughs> yeah which is that part terrified me more than any (laughs) other like thing of of, like this show which is about if we lost and germany took over the whole country like the fact that that part rang so true to how that's how like quickly things can go south Mm -hmm. you know like like you just accept that yeah the, the cop just sort of said it matter of factly and he's like Yep, it's just, you know, the ashes of the dead raining down on you. Uh, see ya. <laughs> Enjoy oh. your egg salad. <laughs> yeah, I was like, cover up your sandwich, bro. <laughs> cover it up. That's yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. I, I like I like that the they're bu- they built up, you know, like tensions between both like American citizens that were have been around or just are still there and don't want to be ruled over anymore and like are becoming a resistance Mm -hmm. like that section and then they also are taking the time to be like there's also people that are in control that are now like worried and about to fight as well 
Mm-hmm. So there's definitely multiple fronts that this story is coming in. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Because uh, there's essentially four like storylines in the in the pilot. You get uh, Juliana, you know, discovering these films and trying to figure out what her sister was getting into. You have Joe going on this like secret mission and like figuring stuff out along the way, uh, and then us finding out that he's actually working with the Nazis at the end. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. And then uh, the third the third one that we have talked about was like the political intrigue about. Uh, Japanese and German upcoming war potentially and both sides trying to work it out uh, and then the fourth one that we haven't talked about yet is uh, this guy Obergruppen Obergruppen Fuhrer mm. which I think his t- that's his like title which I think is mm-hmm. probably just like assistant to the general manager <laughs> but in German <laughs> or something but for uh, Nazis yeah for but it's this guy I don't even know that we're given his name um, but his name is John Smith yeah. Um and he's a he's essentially like a Nazi officer. Uh not unlike uh what's the the name of the character from Inglorious Bastards where um he's like very smart and well spoken uh Christoph. but also like a brutal brutal Nazi. Yeah. Oh the the guy that uh God, what's his name? And now I can't even remember the actor's Isn't his name. name Christoph Waltz. Yes, yeah, the, the guy Christ- Christoph, Christoph Waltz, Waltz character. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like his storyline, just for short, is like he, you know, is is on the tail of the resistance leader that gives Joe Blake his mission, um, and he's in charge of like trying to get information out of him via torture. But he knows all of the information already. Um, he's just torturing him for the sake of torture and to send a message to the resistance leaders. Um, but like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys thought of him. I, it seems like, like, because he speaks like perfect English, I assume that he's an American that somehow rose up the Nazi ranks. Yeah. I mean, his name is, mm. if he, he's John, if his name is John Smith, yeah, that, that too, you know, like that's like a, Seems like he, maybe he is uh, an American. Mm-hmm. It'd be like messed up if he was like, he fought in the war and then he just became like a Nazi. Mm-hmm. Oh, also the or- Orpus Gruppenfuhrer thing mm-hmm. is the mm-hmm. highest rank, uh, commissioned rank in the SS, with the exception of the Reichsfuhrer held by Heinrich Himmler, which is, you know, the the, the really bad one. Okay, <laughs> so, so he's, he's maybe like, like a high up like general, like tops of the military, but maybe not a political leader or something. Yeah, it seems he's just like super high up SS officer that can probably just do whatever he wants mm-hmm. and be as cruel and awful a human as <laughs> anyone can imagine. Yeah, I recognize him from something. Apparently he's English. I could see and, that. And and was in a Knight's Tale. <laughs> yeah. He's English, so that's why he can speak perfect. Uh, has a perfect American, American accent. accent. Yeah. Uh, Joe, <laughs> You're so good at that. When you were watching the first season, did they ever explain what the accident with Juliana Juliana was? Um, I don't remember that at all. Because so her boyfriend did, at one point said he's like. You, they just can't get you down, like not even a bus or something like that. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, did she get hit by a bus? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they hint at some sort of accident where she was kind of like laid out for a while. But now she's like back up doing Aikido and like she's not working yet, but she's like looking for a job. She seems completely mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Other yeah. than them saying the accident, there would have been nothing to me to like think there was anything wrong with her. So. <laughs> And I don't even believe them, I don't think. <laughs> I was just wondering if you know. I, I feel like the quote-unquote accident is not going to last four seasons and be involved in the last episode. So mm-hmm. I kind of assumed that was something they would just spill eventually. Yeah. So what would you guys think? Uh, are there parts of the story that you're more interested in? Yeah, I mean, overall, I like this, and I would roll right into the second episode mm-hmm. for sure. Um I think this is a good show. Alternate history is fun. You know, hopefully sticking it to the Nazis is going to be fun eventually. 
you know so i mean in, i guess in the end if the not the nazis win again then that might be a little s- sad <laughs> <laughs> feel like i wasted four seasons but uh so far i'm in and yeah i think i'm more into the what's going to happen when hitler dies that's mm-hmm. like the part i'm interested mm-hmm. in right now if it, out of like that's my top one i think they're all cool though mm-hmm you want to just see stuff go sideways in the I world see, burn. I just want to see Hitler die, Jimmy. <laughs> That's fair. I I'm really uh I was really hoping for more of um Frank's boyfriend Frank's subplot of making and selling jewels. I don't <laughs> I, I don't think we're gonna see that. I think I think he's dead. <laughs> oh no! What was his name Frank? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a guy that like works in a factory, but used to be some sort of like jeweler or something. Um, and like, yeah, just because it's like occupation times, like it's just not really job opportunities for like an artist right now. Yeah, there's the a whole electric- scene where he yeah. brings like his mechanic, like foreman, as his like drool jewel drawings, rural juror. <laughs> and he and and he turns him down and he's like it's just like wah wah <laughs> it's like is this scene necessary at all stop trying to make jewels happen frank <laughs> uh, i mean joe you watched a season i guess of this show why did you stop um so this show came out um in 2015 and I think I watched it either when it came out in 2015 or somewhat, you know, the, you know, early 2016. Um, and yeah, I was intrigued in a lot of the, um, the pol- political intrigue of what's going on with Hitler and like the power struggle. And what does that mean for trying to prevent a war? Um, and also like the sci-fi stuff that they hint at with like the, the films and alternate universes. I was intrigued by all of that. I really like grew to hate, uh joe blake um (laughs) i think watching this first episode again i think it's the actor himself um (laughs) i think he's just a bad actor but uh because i was struggling when i watched it the first time i was struggling between do i not like this actor or do i just not like the way this character is written because he's you know he's the first character we see um and so we're supposed to be on his side because he's just the first guy we see um and people are explaining things to him so like we see ourselves in him but then at the end of the episode he's revealed to be working with the nazis so we're just like wait a second fuck this guy i mean what (laughs) but like because but like they play with that throughout the whole first season of like is this guy working with the nazis or is he some sort of double agent we don't really Mm. know and it's like because of that he's so just like in between and just like blank Hmm. like like you don't really you can't really read anything from this guy and then the actor plays him with just like zero charisma (laughs) which i feel like is maybe a choice because you're not trying to hint at he's an evil guy or he's a good guy but it's just like it's just zero so when this guy shows up on the screen i'm just like i don't why am i wasting my time watching this like this is not entertaining um So that was kind of my, you know, my feelings on season one is like, I was really intrigued with some of it, but really annoyed by this one guy. And then I don't really remember. Oh, well, for like the show thing is I watched the, the, the next season came out the following year in like December, 2016. And I watched the first episode and I remember there was some specific plot thing that pissed me off and I can't remember what it is now. It was something like, uh, like there was a boat that I was really excited about what the plot developments were on this boat. Cause I don't know if like something bad was happening to Joe Blake or something, <laughs> but like there's a boat and I was like, fuck yeah, this boat rules. And then the boat blew up and I was like, okay, I don't think I can watch this show anymore if they're not going the <laughs> boat route. It was something like that. I don't remember. But another thing was, um, so 2015 or, you know, even early 2016, like my mindset is a lot different than like, <laughs> just after november 2016 like uh, like just after november 2016 i'm like way in way less interested in like watching a show about mm-hmm. hey what if the nazis were in charge i'm just out <laughs> um yeah. which is telling that now that it's you know january 2021 i'm like hey whatever happened to that show about the nazis i could watch that again <laughs> whatever happened to nazis <laughs> 
now that the Nazis finally oh. aren't in charge, let's watch one. <laughs> as far as we know. Yeah. Uh, should we get into predictions now? Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> yeah, we should probably do that. Uh, Jimmy, why don't you go first? Okay. Wow. Uh, number one, I think Trudy, Trudy kills Joe. Trudy's already dead. So, well, okay. She's calling herself Trudy. Um, <laughs> Juliana. I, Juliana. Ju- Ju- okay. okay. That girl, she took Juliana. on the name Jules. Trudy after Jules. she left. Jules. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, but then I, I obviously, I, I want to think um, the Nazis are defeated. So America wins. Um, okay. Then I think, I think uh, JFK becomes president, having Ooh. never been assassinated. <laughs> like, because it would be 66, Because it would be, yeah, the mid-60s, and he would have never been president and been killed. Um. He was in World War Two also, so that also suggests that he survived. Or I guess if there's a time. Okay, anyway, number yeah. four. <laughs> the timeline lines up, though. You're right. 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 Um, so then number four, I think time travel. I think maybe less interdimensional, whatever, more just like DeLorean. <laughs> like somebody okay. somebody effed up with they have the tapes because that's what really happened Mm -hmm. Um, hot tub time machine somebody time machined it cool effed it all up nice um i'm gonna do mine now i bet this first one's gonna be wrong but i wrote it down (laughs) hitler isn't dead dot 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 but i wouldn't call him human okay anymore (laughs) undead (laughs) um werewolf i i I think that potentially hitler does like end up dying in the show from his disease or whatever and then things would probably continue in for this like the the nation's fighting like the the second american civil war in a way Mm -hmm. (laughs) of japan versus germany on american soil Uh, and i think hitler is around but he's like Maybe his he's a head in a jar and he's like still alive, or yeah. like they uploaded his consciousness into a supercomputer or something. Like Hitler, in a way, is al- around, but like he's not his like living body, yeah, as a whole anymore. We'll just, know it when we see it. He just comes back like Palpatine in Episode Nine. Yeah, <laughs> it make just as much sense. <laughs> <laughs> It'd probably make more sense actually. Um, <laughs> And then, so number two, I think, uh, along the same lines, is Jap- Japan and the U.S. R- team up in resistance. Like, the re- U.S. resistance and Japan, like, team up. They figure it out. They figure out that Germany is too big of a, like, they're too bad and too risky now that, that so they, they're they on each other's side to okay. get rid of Germany. Um, I think Juliana is still in this show and she then dies in a grand gesture of either love or duty mm, to her country. Like, for, like, so it's some sort of, she's dying for like, you know, it's not like she just gets shot like unceremoniously or something. Mm. She like, she sacrifices herself in a, some sort of grand gesture. Okay. Um, and then number four, dear <laughs> God, let it happen. There's a blimp or a Zeppelin. There's a floating, <laughs> thing in the sky probably nazi owned but <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that's that's the fourth one blimp well there is a shot there is a shot there is a shot um i have that uh juliana has a child i don't know why i just think that having a child in this world would like raise the stakes um i have that uh, Obergruppen Fuhrer Smith is a like full on <laughs> resistance fighter. Obergruppen Fuhrer for sure. Resistance fighter now. Yeah, he's a full on resistance guy. No longer, um, no longer Nazi high hmm. up. He's given it up. Um, similar to a prediction Jimmy had, but just more general, I guess, is I had that a member of the Kennedy family is a <laughs> prominent politician. So not necessarily JFK and not necessarily president, but some member of the Kennedy family is a politician somewhere. 
Um, and then I don't know whether it's a advanced German technology thing or a time jump to the future, but I think we see someone playing video games. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I like it. Hmm. I want to mm-hmm. see it. I want to see someone get that high score on Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking like. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. That's what they're playing. I hope I hope the Japanese uh ambassador is playing Mortal Kombat. He's playing Shang Tsung. Uh, okay, well let's uh let's watch this final episode. Uh I guess the whole fourth season came out on November fifteenth, so that doesn't really matter. Um the last episode is called Fire from the Gods. Episode uh 10 of season four that's the final one ended in 2019 so we'll watch that and we'll be back after that all right everybody we're back from the final episode of the man in the high castle it was called fire from the gods do you have a write-up jimmy yeah just gonna read the uh, amazon thing here On the brink of an inevitable Nazi invasion, the BCR brace for impact as Keto races against the clock to find his son. Childon, something, Childon, offers everything he has to make his way back to Yukiko. Helen is forced to choose whether or not to portray her husband as she and Smith travel by high-speed train to the portal with Juliana and Wyatt laying lying in wait to blow them up. Oh, that's that. Yeah, I suppose it doesn't like finish it. Right. Um, yeah, and then I mean, so Smith is he's the same guy from the first episode, then isn't he? Yeah, that's that guy. He's so he's like in the ranks. He's like number one American Nazi, basically, it seems. (laughs) Top Nazi. Yeah, he's top Nazi. (laughs) He's definitely still getting like orders from Berlin or something. But, and it seems like they were uh, trying, starting to enact a plan to essentially invade the West and take it over. Mm -hmm. So Hitler must have been, Hitler must have died. (laughs) <laughs> right, and Helen. Helen finds the plans to um, build concentration cram- camps in the Pacific West, where the where the Japanese have control. Yeah, I feel. I thought like a lot of this episode was Helen and and John Smith and their family. Was it not? A lot of it was. We had them. We had. Um, Juliana and some folks in the resistance and then um we had this like black american resistance Mm -hmm. thing going on i had wondered if like yeah that black american movement had somehow like taken power in the west um Mm. because they were in san was that san francisco or they were i wasn't sure was it- but when they were showing like the bombing raid coming at the end like they didn't show like like japanese defending it was that like town of like black americans yeah right i was like trying to figure out if that was like farther west or that was like in the neutral zone that right they it were, kind of like, like looked like into. neutral zone but you would think that like yeah, there would have been something in like San Francisco or, or something else out west. So it made mm-hmm. me think that like that they were somehow in power. Um but yeah, I don't know, couldn't tell. Cuz there was there they was def- stuff going on with uh I forget the name of the Japanese guy, but he was like the Japanese inspector from the first episode. Yeah. Oh, Shang Tsung. Kido, I think. Kido. Oh, no, 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 not this. Yeah, yeah. Shang Tsung was the uh <laughs> was the ambassador. ambassador yeah where like when he was threatening someone else he was saying he was talking about going back to old times or something mm-hmm. um 
So it seems like there's been some sort of shift in the West. Yeah, there's definitely something different. Oh, before we keep going, I looked it up and that the reels that were called uh, the Grasshoppers Heavy Steps or whatever Mm -hmm. it was, Mm -hmm. that's the title of a book inside of the book of uh, of the man in the high castle. It's there. I'll, I just happened to find like some other dude who wrote a book called in real life. Thing. Called, <laughs> yeah. Called that grasshopper. But, so. Grasshopper lies heavy. Yeah. That's a, uh, it's talking about that. So interesting. Just to get that right. Um, I don't know. The, the Wikipedia just says um, that the, that the invasion was on the Pacific States. And that, that it was halted by Smith's second in command, General Whitcroft, mm-hmm. um, who who symbolically throws away his his Nazi thing. I mean, we all know that like basically what happened was then that guy got murdered and the Nazis just kept fighting them, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe. Seems... I mean. The, That's like saying, like, after the president dies, the vice president's like, I'm not doing this shit anymore. And everybody else is like, oh, yeah, that's cool. They, so the next person would just be like, cool, now I'm in charge. Well, yeah, I'm sure it wouldn't dissolve, but they still might, um, like, surrender the war. Potent- yeah, it at least delay stuff, mm-hmm. for sure. Hmm. Uh, that's the first thing I thought <laughs> for some reason when that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then... What's going on with this uh, other world's portal thing? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thousands of people seem to just be inexplainably walking through this portal into this world, mm-hmm. which seems strange to walk into this hellscape. Yeah. The portal. From wherever you're from. The portal. Yeah, what opens... world are you coming from? Uh, opens and closes the uh, the finale. The first thing we see in the show is like this just this dark tunnel and then like a beam of light appears and then it goes into like the show proper. <laughs> and then yeah, and then the last scene is um like the resistance fighters going up to the tunnel and then it opens up and all of these people come through and they say something like where are they coming from and someone else says everywhere. And it's like kind of a happy mm. thing, but yeah, it couldn't be more vague for someone who hasn't seen the show, though. Yeah, like, come on, right. <laughs> say Pittsburgh or something. <laughs> they're from Pittsburgh. <laughs> Remember when Pittsburgh was leveled? These are the people that died there, and they're alive now. <laughs> they were in this. <laughs> this is the thing tube, we've been man. working on all season, and it's resolved. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and also inexplainably, uh, Stephen Root from <laughs> who's he's in everything but um i i love him in uh news radio james james the man so nice they named him twice have you seen a stapler in office space? yeah he's also office base just just so many things but he just he just walks off into the into the portal like against the against the stream of people yeah, right? Where's he going? Is he going everywhere? Yeah, he's then? just yeah, like, he's just going everywhere. He's gonna go live a life. Part of me else. part of me honestly thought at some points during this, are we in the same world that the season one episode one was in? Like are we in the same I America? Think so. Like are did, did somebody transfer dimensions? Mm-hmm. I think so because I, of the way Smith was talking about with his wife about seeing his like dead child in some other world uh-huh. and bringing him back. And she's like, no dude, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, that seems she's crazy. right though. That is insane. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I kind of thought that too, but it did make me think about it every once in a while. Like during the thing at the end, I feel like I was like, yeah, we're where we were. What is this freaking portal thingy? Yeah, I mean, how it. is it utilized <laughs> during this show? Because it we got so, portals that's, to other worlds. I mean, it seemed like yeah, Joe, like you said, like when the when the people came through, they were like they're from everywhere, and everyone seemed like happy, like it was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so in that and then i guess that made me go okay well this feels like a i guess this does kind of feel like a a finale for sure like the big bad guy died Mm -hmm. the bombing stopped and then uh, a bunch of people came out of a a wormhole Mm -hmm. and people were happy about it seeming like concluding a bunch of different things Mm -hmm. but that for me i just got a lot of questions that i want answered (laughs) yeah juliana's having visions somehow she's a ghost she's a vision ghost she's a vision ghost I, Uh, i think well i mean one of my questions is what happened to joe and frank who were like the two main like protagonist dudes yeah. from the from the pilot and i and, like i know from the first season um joe yeah, blake either one were in this right yeah i mean joe blake was in it in like one of juliana's visions briefly oh he was um yeah he was <laughs> like she was like walking through the tunnel and like he shoots her um oh okay but yeah like joe blake was like you know essentially like protagonist a or protagonist one B of the, uh, the pilot and Frank was at least, you know, the boyfriend of, uh, protagonist one a, and it's just like, they're both just gone. And Juliana's like holding hands with that other dude now. <laughs> yeah. Which for someone she- who didn't really like the Joe Blake character, like, I'm much more interested now, <laughs> knowing that he's gone. <laughs> you know, he might go away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, inexplainably there's... gone. It's not she. I think she called that other dude her husband at some point mm-hmm. as well. So, super gone. Frank. Yeah. I mean, Frank is super gone. Yeah. The uh yeah the two like politicians ambassadors from the, the German and Japanese side that we met in the pilot and that I know are big parts of the first season they're both gone. Hmm. Makes me wonder what like how if they like got away from source material or something at at some mm-hmm. point like I wonder how like just watching this I can't imagine the book ends like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just super, seems super random. Well, it's only one book too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, three, four seasons and for one book, you're making a lot of other stuff up on the side, you know, mm-hmm. or you're potentially completing the book and then continuing the show, doing, you know, right. doing a Game of Thrones. Yeah, like maybe they finish the book in season two <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or something. Little throne game. <laughs> I read that this was originally like pitched as a four, like four mini series kind of thing, and like ten episodes. Although they're an hour long, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm more interested well, in the book than I am the show. Oh. Well, I'm pretty interested in this show, I think. I think this might, unless Joe Blake scares me off as I'm watching <laughs> season one, I think I'm interested in this. I think uh, nice. I think I'm going to dive in at some point. Uh, I guess, Jimmy, you've potentially spoken what you lo- You want to read the book instead? I mean, I, I liked this. This finale felt a little different to me, too. Like, it looked different. I don't know if you noticed that the first I was really interested in the in the pilot, the way that it felt sometimes had like a Frank Miller, like Sin City vibe. Did you like catch any no, of that? I totally thought that, too. Uh, I think like especially that one of the early shots where Joe Blake is walking through this like alternate universe, New York City. Um, it had a very like cinematic comic book feel of just like he was walking through like Times Square and there's like a big swastika on like one of the big screens. And it's like, yeah, very stylistic and still like sixties and stuff, but yeah, they've kind of gone away from that from in the finale here. It's a little bit more 
basic sci-fi like still premium expensive looking but yeah a little more generic sci-fi yeah i mean i'm into it i'm into the portals to other dimensions <laughs> a lot of shows did it right steven Root. you know stargate did it sliders did it uh Deep Other Space Nine points? did it. <laughs> Voyager. Voyager did it. Yeah. That's just. Yeah. That's just I, I think. Wormholes. I think I'm at. We're at you. I think I'm at where you guys are at in that. I'm intrigued. I think another thing that sells me on it is that it's only ten episodes per season, and there's only four seasons. Um, right. For like a. There's at least there's at least that much pandemic left. Yeah. So. Exactly. <laughs> For, <laughs> for for like you know a a deep drama like this um seems pretty action packed if you know there's only 40 episodes and the last episode literally is like the end of the war so like it's probably a lot of stuff going on in between yeah yeah cool i like it should we see how we did in predictions I'm pretty pissed. <laughs> I was like, I was aggressively wrong on things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, agreed. I think, uh, Jimmy, you went first last time. So I suppose you should show us what's that. Okay. I thought, um, Trudy killed Joe and that's inconclusive. I still hope so. It still could be possible. <laughs> I'll have to watch more of the show to find out. Um, the Nazis are defeated. I mean, no. Right? They, I mean, if they anything, called up, they, they kind of gave the up. The Nazis. <laughs> I don't think, I don't, I don't know if this counts as the war. This war is not over. I don't believe at all that the war is over. I think this action is done, is done. I think, like, I'm led to believe that they're, like, this is a turning point. Like, they... Uh, some like the the resistance people had taken over the airwaves and had spread their message um, yeah. and telling people to resist. But like, I don't think that they have any strategic position yet that the Nazis would necessarily surrender. Sure. If this show was going, uh, took like, had like, you know, six months to a year longer in this world, then I bet, I bet the war's over, <laughs> but who yeah. knows? It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't really clear what, like, the second in command. Anyway, okay. Uh, JFK is not the president. Um, and it was not time travel. It was, uh, it was portals. Seems like it was dimensional uh, travel at, at most. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is that a, a big old zero. donut? All right. Well, let me follow you up on my zero train, Jimmy. Number one, I said Hitler isn't dead, but I wouldn't call him human. Uh, I think Hitler's dead. He might be dead. <laughs> he was sure. dead. He if he if he was alive, we we don't know. So yeah, the Reich Führer had like a painting of him in the background. I think. Well, sure. Um, but that's Who all doesn't? we saw of Hitler. <laughs> when I die, I want you to have a painting in your uh, parlor of me. So. Oof. Um. So that's not it. I said the Japan and the U.S. resistance team up. Uh that's also not known at all. Mm-hmm. Seems like there's one a resistance still, and this other like, like kind of like black militia, like army, like nation potentially, mm-hmm. and maybe they're the same as well. But I didn't see like a reference to like the country of Japan teaming up with anybody. Yeah, from, mm-hmm. in America. They had their own stuff they were uh, dealing with, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Juliana dies in a grand gesture. No, she's uh, fine. No, she's fine. Not a scratch on her. Doing well. Should have said Helen. Helen died in a grand gesture. Yeah. 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 But I didn't know Helen's name in the first episode, <laughs> so that was my problem. And the most disappointing of all, I did not see a blimp. Yeah. They went this by train train plane 
Yeah. Automobile. I saw all of those. I like looked away for a second. And then when I looked back, I saw that like the Reich Fuhrer was traveling. And I was like, oh, is this a blimp? And then no, it was just a train. Just a train. Uh, So zero points. Um, I think I'm also a zero. I had that Juliana has a child and she does not. She's still, you know, busy fighting with the resistance. Um, I had that the... At the time, Obergruppenfuhrer uh, is now a full-on resistance fighter and much the complete opposite. He's <laughs> only risen in the Nazi ranks to top top American Nazi. <laughs> um, top Nazi. Yeah. Uh, I had the, a member of the Kennedy family is a prominent politician, and there wasn't any mention of Kennedy's. There is a mention of J. Edgar Hoover, but um, no Kennedy's. Um, I had that we see someone playing video games, and I didn't think we saw that. Did see some weird technology, some yeah. advanced tech, but you even saw like a video phone. Yeah, but that's interesting. But yeah, but no <laughs> video games. A video tra- phone and a cool train. Mm-hmm. That's about it. All right. Well, we all uh, didn't do great on points, but man, I hope we found a, a new good show to watch uh, for our consolation prize. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Uh, well, I mean, I guess that's it. That's that's this podcast for this week. It's officially ending. If you guys, uh, listeners, if you would like to hit us up with show suggestions or uh, other other comments and whatnot, you can do that at F and L podcast on the Gmail or on the Twitters. Um, and then also with whatever you're listening to this on, uh, hit subscribe on that thing and then rate us five stars because that's fun. And like the person that, uh, you know, suggested this show, you too you too can have your voice heard on first and last I'm trying to like talk like smoothly now <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that uh, but yeah thank you for listening and we'll see you next week for uh, one more goodbye one more there's just one yeah I made it kind of sound like that was it it's not just another one